cancer of the mouth of the uterus that's a cervix is called cervical cancer and majority of the times it's caused by a viral infection this virus is called human papilloma virus so any persistent infection of this kind can lead on to cervical cancer it can be abnormal vaginal discharge it can be watery discharge it can be uh, blood tinge discharge it can be a post coital bleeding and uh, at times there can be no symptoms and in the early phase you may not get any symptoms at times the pain in the pelvic area so these are majority of the times these are the symptoms when we talk of screening though it is meant for the healthy ladies but at times while doing the screening we get to see the abnormal cells so this is one way of detecting it but yes the best proven method is a cervical biopsy whenever we see a suspicious lesion we biopsy it and that's what gives us the diagnosis early sexual debut smoking smoking actually doubles up the risk then as i said chronic persistent infection with hpv uh, most of the times it's a skin to skin uh, transmission so this can also lead on to cancer so this is a risk factor immunocompromised conditions local infections so these are the factors yes preventive measures are uh, one screening regular screening is uh, recommended that after the age of 21 one should get screened and uh, there are various ways of screening if one can opt for hpv testing that's ideal if not so whatever screen method is available in your uh, area you should go for that it can be a cytology by pap smear there are other ways also and uh, then the other preventive measure which is again very important is vaccination vaccination that's uh, meant for cervical cancer is uh, recommended for all the girls above the age of 9 so from 9 to 14 years of age two injections are to be given at an interval of 6 months and uh, for the girls of the age of 15 years and above and uh, till uh, the age of 26 three injections are to be given and uh, so these are the vaccination and uh, after the age of 26 till the age of 45 you should be consulting your gynecologist and at times you may benefit with the vaccination one has to be sure about the diagnosis that's something very important once we have the diagnosis in place then uh, the treatment depends upon the stage of the disease in the early stages if surgery if the patient is young and uh, a fit candidate for surgery surgery is a good option but in the late stages or in the advanced stages it's going to be the radiation and chemotherapy it's important to seek a second opinion if there is no clarity regarding the diagnosis because uh, the diagnosis is very important so it's important it's good to uh, bring your slides in block and have them reviewed at a center which is dealing with the uh, gynec oncology cases and uh, if there is no clarity about the staging again it becomes very important to seek a second opinion because the treatment depends upon the stage of the disease and if you are contemplating a surgery if the surgery has been advised be very sure that it's done by a gynec oncologist because this surgery is different than the routine surgery which is done by the gynecologist mm -hmm.